Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I thought I'd show you how to make a config file that can be deployed on a router to speed up configuration times. An example of this would be for an ISP that's deploying many many routers to multiple clients all the time that need a quick way to set up a base config on a router that can then be tweaked per client. Something to bear in mind is that different routers will have different layouts, so one config file may not work on a different router or with a different router board and different layout. However, that being said, this config file can be edited and tweaked very quickly to be deployed in different scenarios. And I'm going to show you how to do that very quickly and very easily. So to get started, and just for the example in this video, I'm going to be using the Microtech default configuration that comes with every router they ship. So I'm going to open up my terminal, and I'm just going to log in here quickly. I changed the password of the default config, so it's going to be admin. There we go. So I'm going to type in here export which is going to export all of the settings on this router and i'm going to specify where the export needs to go so i'm going to type in file equals and then the file name so i'm going to call this base underscore config and this is going to export a file in a dot rsc format so while that's busy exporting we can then go to the file tab on the router click on it and you'll see our base config.rsc is now there in the files. So this base config file contains the CLI commands um, that will configure this router identically to the way we have it here. So to download this, I'm just going to open up a folder on my computer. I'm going to then click and drag the base config file onto that folder. And that downloads onto my computer. Now you can actually see that this uh, can be opened up in Notepad and that's great because this is where we can change all of the configuration. So I'm going to open this up in Notepad. Okay, so here you can see this is the entire uh, configuration that's currently on the router and these are all just the regular uh, Microtech CLI commands that you would use to set these things up yourself. So this is where we would do all our tweaking and changing the uh, config to suit our needs and I'm now going to show you a few things to look out for. So the first thing that I want to point out is that on the bridge configuration it's going to have the admin Mac set to whatever Mac address was on the um, bridge interface from the router that you're pulling this config off of. So the issue with this is that if you plug this router into the same network um, and you've got this MAC address, which is already on the network, you're going to run into issues. Um, and one of the re actually main reasons that I'm making this video is because of uh, an incident that occurred. I was helping somebody and they had ran an export off of one route to put it on another route and put them both on the same network. And they all had, they had identical MAC addresses. So there was obviously that, so obviously that network wasn't working properly. So what I recommend you do is that you just get rid of this whole admin Mac part and set your auto Mac to yes. So what that's going to do now is when you run this config on a, on a router, it's going to take the Mac address off of the first um, Ethernet port that gets put onto it. Um, but bear in mind when the boot, when the router reboots, uh, this Mac address can change. So if, so, you know, for, in my experience, it's totally fine to run this on your Soho routers and that kind of stuff. But if you need the MAC address to be static, then go ahead and set it once you've run this config. Don't run the config and, uh, and have MAC addresses automatically added uh, that are actually off of a different router. Another thing to bear in mind is if your routers are running a triple PoE client, for example, you may want to put in a generic address for that. Uh, the same goes for your Wi-Fi passwords and names. So if we go here um, and just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to take out the five gigahertz broad uh, radio. Okay. So interface wireless. Here you've got your band settings, your channel settings, channel width, um, disabled. No. So that's going to make sure that the uh, wireless, um, the wireless uh, broadcast is on um, and then you can change, you can create under here, you can change the uh, SSID to something like a default, right? So you can call this like base 
underscore Wi-Fi and then oops and then you can go and change that per customer and the same can be done for things like default Wi-Fi passwords etc uh, on the default config the security profile is actually set to none so we're not going to see any of those settings in here but um, yeah that's just an example of a few of the things that you can do and you can change things like firewall rules if you need specifics if you need to add specific address lists and those kinds of things, you can do that all in here. Uh, now, I did mention earlier that different router, different routers will have different layouts. So you might get into a situation where you have a script such as this one that's busy uh, issuing our commands to specific interfaces. Now, you may not have those interfaces on a different router. Um, so here's where you could actually go in um, and you can change things like here, for example, interface bridge port. Now it's busy adding in ether two, three, four, five, and the wireless interfaces to the LAN bridge. Uh, you know, for example, if you didn't have, um, you know, ether four or ether five, you could take that out. Or if you had more, like if you had, for example, maybe one router has five, but the next router you're working on has eight interfaces. You can just add those in here. And the same thing would go for like DHCP clients or triple POE clients, you know, maybe on the router you're using, it has an ethernet one and you want the, um, you want that client to be on that ethernet port, or you may have a router that has an SFP port and you'd like your WAN to be going through the SFP port, for example, or, or something like that. Um, you know, there's many, many different ways and configurations that you can have things done. Okay. So I think that's enough talking about this. Um, I hope that, um, that makes sense to everyone. Um, of course, you know, using scripts like this and changing scripts like this will obviously uh, mean that you will have to have an understanding of how the uh, MicroTik CLI works. Um, but if you have a good understanding of the layout of Winbox, uh, typically, uh, and, and where, where to do certain settings and things, typically uh, the CLI is, you know, quite straightforward. Um, anyway, so now that we've done a few changes here, we can just save this. So I'm going to hit control S on my keyboard to save, or you can go to file and save. Now we can actually import this onto a router. So I have got a virtual topology running just for this video. So R1 is busy running currently, and we're going to upload our, uh, RSC script file onto this router and run the config. Okay. So I'm going to open a new session of winbox i'm going to look in my neighbors for r1 i guess i factory reset it so that's fine i know what the mac address is so let's just log in here okay awesome uh old password is nothing let's just make this a generic password okay now you can see this router actually has um no real config on it. It only it just has a DHCP uh, DHCP client put on ETH one, uh, and that is from the uh, virtual topology. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into files, and we're going to drag and drop our base config script onto the router into its file directory. Now you can see it's uploaded. So what we can do now is we can click on that and say restore. And we've got our base config RSC file uh, selected. So we can click restore and I'll show you how to do it in the terminal as well. So you can just go onto the terminal. And if the file's in the, um, if the file is in the uh, MicroTix files, um, you can do this. You can go import um, and then you can just say, uh, the name of your file. So base config.rc and then you can press enter. Syntax error. Okay. Let's see why. So let's go on and check line 135 and see why it's not happy. Column five, line 135. Okay. So it looks like it's unhappy with this, uh, command here on the line 135, where it says set auto upgrade to yes. So I'm just going to take that out. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to go ahead and remove any of the ether five and WLAN um, mentions because on this virtual router, uh, firstly, we don't have ether five. We also don't have any wireless interfaces. So uh, 
this is actually a great example of how uh, incompatible configurations could come about and how to fix them. So I'm going to just remove that, add to the bridge. I'm going to get rid of interface wireless. Okay. And the interface wireless security profiles. Okay, so now that we've worked out all those issues, um, and as you can see, the compatibility of these files can differ quite dramatically depending uh, you know, on the router that you're using. Uh, different firmware versions as well may have certain features that no longer exist on the current router, in which case you're going to get an error. So now you can see that these kinds of config files really work best if you're going from the exact same router board to the exact same router board in the exact same layout. So. For example, if I were to be using the same uh, type of HAP router, this would work flawlessly and um, you would be able to go in and, and change the relative settings um, like the triple POE account details or the Wi-Fi name or, you know, those kinds of things very easily. But you, you have to have the correct expectation when it comes to these files um, that it's really there to speed up configuration to get rid of certain menial tasks um, that can slow down and, and, and you know, negatively impact your efficiency. Okay, so now that we've done all that, let's take our file, our base config.rst, chuck it into our file directory on the, on the Microtech router. We can go into our terminal now and we can say import and then name the uh, file that we want. So this is now going to import this file and it's going to load the script onto the router. So the moment we hit, so the moment we hit enter, it's going to start loading it and the settings are going to take effect. So let's do that. Okay, there we go. Script file loaded and executed successfully. So we can close our terminal now, um, or we can actually just type export and we can see all our settings have dragged through they've come across and here they all are. So now, you know, for example, if we wanted to, um, you know, go ahead and change the system identity, you know, this is something that we would do. So, you know, this is something that we could do at each individual client. And now instead of having to configure the whole router from scratch, um, we can simply change maybe three or four things uh, which would allow us to configure much, much quicker and we could get uh, to multiple clients in one day much faster. So, you know, we can change something like the system identity. And then, you know, that will change the name of the router, for example. And the same can be done for Wi-Fi, SSID and password and uh, all of those kinds of things that I've, that I've actually already mentioned in the video. Okay, cool guys. Uh, so this has just been a quick look at how to do that. Um, I hope you found this useful and enjoyed the video. Again, um, this is not really meant as uh, an auto config uh, that's going to require, you know, no hands on. Um, like I said, it's really just there to speed up the efficiency of your configurations if you're deploying multiple of the same routers. Um, and, you know, it gets rid of the aspect of needing to do menial tasks such as adding DHCP servers or LAN addresses or, you know, all those kinds of things that, or firewall entries, for example, which is, you know, oftentimes when I'm working and have been working in the field in the past and I've been at a client's premises and I need to configure a router from scratch, if you don't have a to-do list or a checklist of things to go through, you oftentimes you can, um, you know, you can use the default config on the router, uh, but oftentimes when you're adding in, you know, customized things, you miss things like firewall filters and, you know, that can become a big problem uh, if, you, if you're if you putting in, you know, incorrect configurations at client's premises. So this is something that can also be there as a safeguard, uh, you know, to, to prevent things like uh, misconfigurations or um, configurations that just simply haven't been put in. So yeah, like I said, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe and leave a like if you did and uh, if you have any issues uh, or comments or questions leave them down below and uh, I'll get back to you.